got some feedback on it and I started playing around with it. Um, I'm definitely using the Wacom pad way more now. It took a while to get used to using it. I use it for all the real fine tuning touch up work and I hadn't done any of that to this image but after the feedback I know that this image can definitely benefit from some really careful adjustments. So I have my Wacom pad on and as I was starting to do a little bit of dodging and burning and such on this image I thought I might as well just uh, share a little bit about one approach that you might try to use in your dodging and burning if you're not already doing it or you know you may end up using other methods but this is just one that I use often. So some of the feedback was that the darks are too dark in some certain areas and I definitely see that now. Um, dark in this ridge, dark in this hole, kind of dark over here. I also think it's a little bit dark in this zone right here. And maybe a little bit dark on the waves over there. Um, just, you know, a few things. It's a painterly approach, of course. So, I just want to share my thinking. I'm not a big mass count. Uh, now that I'm using the Wacom pad, I'm using, or Wacom pad. Now that I'm using the Wacom pad a lot more, I am going back to masking quite a bit more than I was before. But I still use a variety of methods on my work depending on the situation and what I think is going to work the best. Now in this situation, I'm wanting to do some pretty simple dodging of the deepest, darkest shadows. But this is my thoughts. I'm going to duplicate the layer. Command J if you're Mac, Control J if you're PC. My go-to tool for blending has been for some years now blend if so I'm going to double click on the image the layer style blend if options come up and if you don't know much about this yet it's so powerful usually all I use is this right here this grayscale with the sliders leave this here leave everything in check once in a while I use the underlying layer but in this case I'm wanting to do a more advanced dodge without any overspray into middle tones or into highlights. So my thought is just take the left side of the white slider, hold Alt down, which will split it. And with the Wacom pad, I'm having trouble here getting my cursor exactly where I want it. But anyway, split it all the way across. That's sort of a simple method. So if you're concentrating on shadows, you're splitting highlights out. If you're going to be burning highlights, you could split the black slider all the way across. And what you're doing is you're taking away all of the shadows and middle tones, fading through the middle tones. And then that way your upper highlights are going to be affected the most. Now there won't be any overspray. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. What it's doing, if you want to see a visual, this is somewhat helpful, is it's leaving the darkest, deepest shadows intact. And the lighter things get, the more you see the boxes, the squares. So the highlights are gone. Anywhere where the highlights are really bright are completely gone. There's no detail there. Anything that's solid black or close to it is solid and opaque. So that's somewhat helpful, but just watch how it works. Of course, I'm going to put this in luminosity mode so that colors don't change. Anytime you darken, things will become desaturated. Anytime you lighten, they become saturated or more saturated. So I don't want that to happen. Sometimes I do, but in this case I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in luminosity mode. Then I'm going to go ahead and take the dodge tool. There it is. Shadows. And I'm just going to choose a pretty moderate exposure. And I have my Wacom pressure on, turned on, so the harder I push, the more intense the effect is. So, you're going to probably have a hard time seeing this because you're seeing a compressed version of video here, but I'm going to go ahead, size up and down my brush. And by the way, some of you know this sometimes your brackets on your keyboard will work, and sometimes they won't work. And this is something that Photoshop absolutely needs to fix. On my last video on web sharpening, I uh, put a big bold fix it. <laughs> <laughs> on there uh, for anybody who has any political stout in the Adobe world. If it doesn't work, just click off of a tool, click on a tool, and then it will work fine. The brackets will size the brush. I like to use the brackets because it's really fast. I hate pulling down menus. So, 
Now I'm going to go ahead and with a painterly type of approach, I'm going to go ahead and work on these dark areas. And it's pretty dark in this zone. What you're going to see is it's lightening up the area. And I'll show you before and after. Doing a little bit sloppy here. I'll show you before and after when I'm done. Kind of lighten up that hole right there. This is a client's image. He shot it with the 5D Mark III. And he exposed really well, so not a lot of problems in the shadows in terms of noise. And maybe a little bit right there. So I'm taking people's suggestions. They suggested this hole was too dark. Maybe a little bit right here. Definitely along the side. And I can actually paint way out here without worrying about the clouds or the sky changing. It's amazing because the blend diff has isolated the tones into the darkest regions. Now I may be overdoing a little bit, but we'll see. And maybe I'll do one little swipe here along the waves to lighten those up just a little bit. And I like to see kind of before and after so I can see if I'm liking the effect. And then also to see if I've overdone anywhere. So there we go. Now you may not even hardly be seeing anything happening on this video, but I'll go ahead and hit the before and after by just turn on and off the eyeball. And there we go. There's that improvement. What's awesome is that the sky isn't changing next to the rock. Maybe the slight darks in the sky right here, just right in that zone, are lightening up a little bit, but it's not anything that's a problem. So far, everything's a benefit. Now, I see some areas where I probably should have done it a little bit less, like maybe right here. And I can go ahead and do that, no problem. But so far, I'm liking what I'm doing. So anyways, maybe even up here on these clouds on the corner here that get a little dark up here. Now, this had a polarized sky. Funny enough, it was totally dark on the left and totally light on the right. And what I did was in RAW, went into my blues, and I darkened my blues for one layer, and I lightened my blues for the other layer, and then I graduated those together. I both graduated from left to right, so that evened out the left to right, and then I created a layer with that, and then I also graduated that one layer from the top down to the horizon line. And I think for the most part, it straightened out the blue issue. So a little bit about blend diff. Split out your white slider all the way across. You can even, if you want the tolerance to be even more intense, you can even pull this back. And in real time, you're going to see it. I'm, I'm seeing the photo change right now as I'm doing this. But if you want it to be exclusively shadows, split out the white slider all the way across. And if you want less tolerance, so it's going to be only the deepest, darkest shadows, you can split this one a little bit further as well. If you were working on highlights, theoretically, if you were working on highlights and you wanted to burn them down, you'd want to rid the image, the top image of its shadows, so that the shadows would not be affected. You'd split that one across. And then if you wanted the tolerance really tight for the upper, upper highlights, and it wouldn't affect the kind of middle tones and kind of mid highlights, you could split this even further, but just see it in real time after you've done your work. So that's how I do a lot of my blending and a lot of other things. So put this back to here, hit OK, and then I got a little bit of a touch up to do on this. Cheers.